Well, I just saw a commercial, and I think it's like you need like a million at least. Is that crazy? Am I way off? My son said, it's not too late, Mom. Just let me know when you've got some two or 3000 saved, and, uh, and I plan to do that. I work full time. I'm probably not going to retire, and I didn't choose that. I never have thought that was the way I wanted to live my life. Um, I would love to slow down as I got older. I'm definitely not prepared. I do know that I need to start a retirement fund. Um, as an independent contractor, I know that it's good to have a Roth IRA. I've heard on my, it's a good tax write-off. Um, but to be honest, that's about all I know. Retirement benefits formally began in 1935, when Franklin D. Roosevelt signed the Social Security Act to pay workers age 65 or older a continuing income after retirement. In the years following World War II, employees established defined benefits, or pensions. By 1970, 45% of all private sector employees were covered by a pension plan, when the Revenue Act of 1978 allowed for defined contribution plans and what we know today as the 401k. Employees could sock away their money in a tax advantage account to supplement any other retirement benefits they had. More and more employees must take responsibility for funding the path to retirement. For many, it's a complex road to navigate. When I think about the future of retirement, maybe nervous is the best word to describe it. Social security is under pressure. Healthcare costs are going up. People are living longer. There are fewer guarantees from pension plans as we talked about. Uh, 401k balances are growing, people are saving. Is it enough to fill all of those different gaps, all of those different sort of sources of pressure on every individual? It's, it's, it's tough, it's tough to think about. Whether it's your parent or your grandparent or your sister or yourself, it's a tremendous amount of complexity to put on the burden or, or to put on the shoulders of any one individual. A challenge is helping to educate employees on exactly how much money that you'll need at retirement because it is a lot more than most people think. There is absolutely a decline in defined benefit pension plans. There's now less than one in five large companies, right, who offer a defined benefit plan to new employees. So those are, are becoming less and less commonplace, at least in the corporate sector. We all want to get to that point. Employer has a responsibility to a certain extent. The employee also has a responsibility to take some action themselves. And we as the entire retirement community have the responsibility to continue to think about ways in which we can improve messaging and ultimately improve these programs. Retirement can be daunting. Whether you're in your 20s and new to the workforce or in your 60s and ready to retire, it is not easy coming to terms with the possibility of a longer career in order to compensate for health care costs and high cost of living. Both employees and employers must be prepared. Some people we talk to have been like, well, I don't know how I can possibly save this much, but other people sure. it's like, it doesn't matter because sure. I love what I do. Sure, sure. Yeah, and it, but that still doesn't take away the difficulty that I see for individuals of our generation and then, you know, my sons and, and daughters and their children, that the more that the state puts that pressure on you to do it yourself, the harder I think it is. I think that the employer's role is to foster an environment where employees feel like they're encouraged to save for retirement, okay? That could be financially through the employer making a commitment to match employee savings. Or it could simply be a softer thing like hosting a financial wellness seminar. Across all of that different dynamics and spectrum of types of employers, one thing we hear pretty consistently and, and we agree with it is that the employer, regardless of any of that, can provide the opportunity to provide clarity on what employees need to do. Finances are a very personal um, you know, topic and so it there is a fine line to how much do we want to get involved and sort of make decisions for our, for our folks. And I think initially some folks might have felt that it was a little bit of an overstep, but we've really actually gotten a lot of great feedback and it has allowed folks to participate in the plan um, and made it really easy for them to do that and for to, us to really help them in keeping them on track for retirement. There are many reasons besides personal concerns that employees may be uncertain about participating. 
like external economic factors. Doing what you love, first and foremost, is the best advice you could ever get, figuring that out. Um, and then learning how to save, and then learning how to trust investors. Um, and, but that's not a for sure thing, that the market can go down. People have lost a lot of money in the last you know, 20 years thinking they had it all figured out. I mean, if you think about starting in the year 2000 with the tech bubble, going into 2001 with 9-11, going into 2002 with Enron and WorldCom, going into 2003 with the start of a war, 2008 financial crisis, 2011 our nation's long-term debt rating is downgraded. Um, just on and on and on, reasons why they could point you to say, I'm not investing, I'm not going to invest because it just seems like a losing proposition. The future of retirement is not always certain, but experts concur that there is more than enough room for exciting innovation. So if you've ever tried to take money out of a 401k, you probably know there's typically a fee in doing so. Every time you dip into it, you get slapped on the hand with a $20 or $30 distribution fee. Why can't we allow people to use these as bank accounts in retirement? I can't imagine that the major record keepers in the industry are going to complain about being able to manage retirees' money through their retirement. And the employer, at the end of the day, I can't, I can't see them having a huge objection uh, you know, either. So why can't we do that? So I think that there's more innovation to come. We've come a long way from where we were uh, when I got into this business. Um, but I think you continue to see, see innovation within these defined contribution programs. I think that the job market is just increasingly more competitive and candidates are looking more and more at benefits in making their employment decisions. Increasingly, the workforce is changing demographics. You know, that's looking a lot different for companies. So I think that we really have no choice but to improve and adjust our, our offerings. Based on all the pressures and challenges we're putting on the shoulders of employees today, we really need to give them their very best chance uh, to achieve success. So it's something for us all to think about. And I think the industry will continue to evolve in that space, increasing transparency, increasing disclosures, and really understanding how all of these different pieces and parts work together behind the scenes.